Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. And I'm Dana Casey with a fun Stitched Sisters sewing project and classic time-saving tips by Nancy Zeman. First, let's take a look at the project we're making today. We'll be making the Cooler Grocery Tote. It's an insulated bag that brings groceries home. We'll be using just a couple of fabrics from Riley Blake's Afternoon Picnic line. Some Pellon Soft Shape, some Pellon Insel Fleece, and Pellon Insel Film. Plan an afternoon picnic or pick up some groceries with this stylish Cooler Grocery Tote. make the cooler grocery tote, we'll start out by making a pattern. As detailed in the instructions, we'll start with cutting a 20 by 43 piece of pattern paper. So it's 20 inches wide by 43 inches long. The first thing we're going to do is fold it. We'll fold it in half and crease the bottom. And we'll take a square ruler and we'll mark the bottom corners. We'll be cutting out a three and a half inch wide by two and three quarter inch deep square out of each bottom corner. Okay. We'll also cut off of the front only a two inch strip. So we'll cut away a two inch strip on the front. It makes the front of the tote a little bit shorter temporarily. Mm -hmm. And I always m mark on the pattern that this is the front. The next thing we'll do is cut some fabric rectangles. We'll be cutting the outer pocket rectangle 18 inches by 20 inches. We'll also need an 18 by 20 inch piece of interfacing to back that pocket and give it some shape. We'll be cutting 20 by 41 inch pieces of outer fabric, Pellon soft shape, insole fleece, Insole film. We'll also be cutting a 6 by 13 inch piece of Pallon Decoville. One sided fusible and the other side is non fusible. So once we have our pattern piece and our rectangles cut, we'll lay the pattern piece on the rectangles and we'll cut out the gusset. These rectangles later, later form a gusset at the bottom of the tote. Oh, so it sits flat. Correct. So from all the layers, we've cut out our tote pattern piece. The next step is to go to the sewing machine. We'll go to the sewing machine and we'll set up the sewing machine for a basting stitch. And we will baste around all outside edges. We're basting a quarter inch, a scant quarter inch, in from the outside edge, just following along the outside of the tote shape. Can you explain to me what a scant quarter inch is? Oh, good question. A scant quarter inch is slightly less than a quarter inch. When we're doing a basting stitch, we don't, we're don't. we going to leave that basting stitch in the project, but we don't want it to show at the end of the project. So if you use a scant quarter inch, just under a quarter inch, when you sew your quarter inch final seams, those basting stitches will hide in the seams. So it's holding the sandwich together. Right. It's like having a pin every quarter inch or so without having pins everywhere. And we use Wonder Clips with this project for ease in handling all the layers. Once we have the interfacing on the back and we add the insole fleece, it's starting to get a little thick and that will bend your pin. So mm -hmm. use Wonder Clips. And this is when the 50 pack of Wonder Clips comes in really handy because I use a lot of Wonder Clips when making the cooler grocery tote. That's a great idea. So we've based it around <coughs> all outside edges of the tote. And it's time for the next step. So the front of the tote will need a pocket. And to make a pocket, we bring in that red gingham rectangle that we cut earlier. We fold it right sides together, and we head over to the sewing machine, and we stitch a quarter inch along that edge. On our next sample, that seam is sewn, but it needs to be pressed. And if you take this to your ironing board and press this, you will press creases where you don't want them. So that's when we use the seam stick. You insert the steam seam stick into the opening and you press the seam. So you'll just press along and press that seam open. But it's a, a flat dowel that sits on the table and doesn't rock. And it's a hardwood so that um, it makes a nice sh sharp press open seam. 
So this sample's been pressed, and then we turned it right side out. And we have a pocket just from a simple rectangle of fabric. And then press it again so it's nice and press. Quick. I always press and press, press and go, press and go. And really before you begin any project, you should use the June Taylor's starch savvy mm. and pre-press all of your fabrics, steam and press and steam and press it. It pre-treats and pre-shrinks the fabric without having to go through the washer and dryer. So we'll place the pocket on the front tote, but we'll need to place it at five inches down. So I'm using the five and one sliding gauge and just making sure that that pocket is five inches down the tote front. And then we'll do some wonder clipping to hold that pocket in place. Right now it's a rectangle tube mm -hmm. on top of the tote, outer tote, but we'll go to the sewing machine and we'll stitch. We'll stitch again with that basting stitch along the side, securing it. It seems like we're doing a lot of stitching around the outside right. edge. It really holds it in place and, and as we keep moving on in steps, everything stays just where you want it without it shifting. So we'll baste along the side seams of the tote and then we'll drop our needle and turn the corner. But now is when you need to turn your sewing machine back to a 2.5 millimeter stitch length because we don't want to base the lower pocket on. That will be on the outside of the tote. We want to stitch that with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. I might have to put a sticky note on there to remind <laughs> me to change the setting. Right. Or the other thing you could do is just use that 2.5 and stitch all the way around that outside pocket. Okay. Easy breezy. After we stitch the pocket on, we need to add some straps. To add the straps, the first thing I do is to fold the tote in half, and I find the center. And I just put a few pins in just through that outside fabric. It's just showing me where the center is. You could mark that line, but there's no need to because we don't want that line to be there when the tote is finished. Okay. So I use that center mark, and I use a 6-inch ruler. A 6 by 24-inch ruler lined up right down the center on the 3-inch mark and then we'll do some marking. We want the handles to stop at the top of the pocket, mm -hmm. the stitching line. So we'll do some marking, lining that up. And we'll slide it down, aligning the three inch ruler marking. And I'll stop at six inches from the top. We don't want the handles to be sewn all the way to the edge, so we'll come down two, four, six inches and place a mark. So that's where we'll stop stitching. Okay. We'll need to make some handles. And we make handles using the two inch bias tape maker. A two inch bias tape maker makes two inch tape, and when you fold it again, it makes one inch handles. Oh, nice and reinforced. It's called a bias tape maker, but we're using it on straight of grain. We cut three crosswise strips that is the width of the fabric mm -hmm. by three and three quarters inches wide. If we cut it four inches for a four inch bias tape maker, it won't fit through. It'll be too tight. We need a little space between there so that the, the fabric doesn't overlap when we pull it through. And then when you fold it, it'll lay nice and flat. Right. So the first step will be to go to the sewing machine and stitch these into one long length. So we'll have all three stitched together and we'll have a really long strap. So we'll take all of that to the, the ironing board and we'll press with the heat of an iron and we'll advance the bias tape maker and we'll make a few yards of two inch tape. When it's folded in half, as you mentioned, it will make nice one inch handles. And we have one of those made and you can see it's a few yards long. That looks like a big strap. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to place a wonder clip at the halfway mark. So I'll put one at my halfway mark and one at your halfway mark. And it can be close. It doesn't have to be exactly. But you put your wonder clip on. And then I take those wonder clips and I place oh, I them. I put it on wrong. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Whoops. We need to do Stitch It Sisters Use Wonder Clips 101. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is where you do want to use a little caution. I'm laying the fabric strips out, but what I didn't tell you would be helpful to know, how did we make that loop? Once we've made all the bias tape, we go back to the sewing machine and we sew the two ends together into a loop. 
So we'll go back to the sewing machine. So the, the edges together mm -hmm. and a quarter inch seam. Press that open and refold it, and that's how we got the big loop. So I'm placing those halfway mark wonder clips right in the bottom center of the tote, roughly. It's it's a continuous loop. Okay. So that'll help it center, and you and you're not going to wonder clip in the middle of the fabric. So we're going to use a couple pins, and I'm just uh, pinning through the top layer of fabric. I'm not pinning through everything. Okay. You'll tend to to bend pins if you try to pin through all layers. The other thing I want to do is put a pin at the top of the pocket. That tells me where to stop stitching. You could do a whole bunch of pinning here and pin this all down. I did my first tote that way, but when I made our samples for the today's video, I got smart. Another uh, tip I learned from Nancy Zeman, she used a lot of glue and tape in the sewing room and it was very handy. So we are going to place double-sided basting tape on the back of the handle. Double-sided basting tape is really sticky and it has a paper backing that you want to peel off and reveal that sticky tape. And it's sticky. It, what it's doing is basting it down with tape. Oh, so it holds it right in place. Right in place, holds it in place. And remember that six inch mark we had here. Mm -hmm. I still put a pin here on the outside of the handle because I don't want to stitch beyond that. If I stitch all the way beyond that, that'll be in the way of the zipper and you won't have free handles. Oh, sure. So I'm placing a pin at the top of the pocket so I know where to stop stitching. Over here too. And then we'll go to the sewing machine and we'll stitch a rectangle all the way around the strap. When it first came out of the bias tape maker, it was loose. So when we folded it, I went to the sewing machine and I stitched right at the edge, edge stitched both sides. Oh, okay. So it's already stitched once, and then I'll come back and stitch it to the tote following that same stitched line. Drop your needle, pivot, turn around the corner, and then stitch all the come way on down. Back. So each, each handle is, side of the handle is sewn on with a rectangle of stitching. Okay. The next step will be to turn this over. Yours will be stitched at this point. Your handle will be stitched on. But we need to give this bag some shape. So we had that one-sided fusible decoville that's going to make this bottom tote have some shape. It'll be more of a stand-up tote. Very good. This is one-sided fusible decoville. And with the heat of an iron, we'll press this in place and use a low temperature on the iron because we have insole fleece. If you have a hot iron on here, you'll melt it. Melt it. The other thing we want to do is use a pressing cloth. So we'll put down the pressing cloth and we'll press this into place. And it doesn't take much. The glue activates uh, pretty quickly. And then that part will be inside the bag. But we don't want to put our groceries inside of a bag that's not finished on the inside. No. Something might leak. So we'll bring back, we'll bring it out from here. That layer of insole film that we cut before. This finishes the inside of the tote and it makes it easy to wipe up. Oh, it spills. Mm -hmm. If your milk jug leaks or something. Mm. So we're going to take Wonder Clips again and we'll clip all the way around the entire edge and we'll go back to the sewing machine and we'll baste. Baste it. All the way around <laughs> the edges. And this is where the handles could get in the way so you could take a pin and pin these to the center so you don't stitch them or catch them in the stitching. I've done that a few times on projects. <laughs> I inadvertently sew on the under layer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every stitcher has done it. Let's bring the uh, finished tote up and we have it inside out because the next step will be to put the zipper in. So on this sample, we need to add the zipper. To insert the zipper into the tote, we'll use a classic Nancy Zeman tip. And she always used zippers that were longer than necessary. But we need to mark the zipper on the wrong side, the width of the tote. So I know the tote is this wide, so this is the alignment that I'll mark on the zipper tape. So no need to measure, just go with the width. Correct. And then we'll do some wonder clipping and clip the zipper to the tote edge. 
So on the back, we will put the zipper tape right sides down, wrong side up so I can see those markings. And we'll wonder clip the zipper right sides together. We'll put a zipper foot on the sewing machine and we'll stitch right along that zipper. So if you can sew a straight line, you can you put can a zipper, sew a zipper. In, especially with Nancy's method. So the zipper then will be turned right sides up and that's when we'll attach it to the front of the tote. And to do this, we need to have the tote inside out. And your insole film will be attached to your tote. <laughs> it's a nice, roomy tote, but it takes up a lot of room on the table, too. It sure does. <laughs> so your, your zipper will be stitched to the back. You'll bring the right side of the zipper to the front and repeat the process. Wonder clip that to the front of the tote and go to the sewing machine and stitch. And that's where we're seeing that zipper extends the side seams. But not to worry, with our craft scissors, We'll cut off that extra zipper tape. It's not needed anymore. It was just a convenient handle for us when we were sewing it in place. Sure. And then we need to take and bar tack at the sewing machine. We'll do a wide zigzag stitch and cover the end of that tape. It keeps the zipper from coming apart and it also attaches it to the side seam and uh, brings stability to it. And secures it. And a, a tip to mention before you turn, before you uh, sew your side seams, you want to open the zipper. So reach in and open that zipper so that we can turn it out, turn it right side out later. Otherwise, you have a nice silver sack. And then sew the side seams. We're going to stitch with that quarter inch stitch and sew both side seams down that side and down this side. And then it'll naturally form that gusset. It naturally just goes right to that shape, and then we'll sew a quarter sew inch. Over on each side of the tote to form a gusset, lower gusset. And when we turn the tote right sides out, I'll let you pull it open. This is when you need a sewing buddy or a sewing sister. sister. Do a little fussy manipulating of it. And then the zipper because we cut that front two inches shorter, mm -hmm. the zipper is naturally on one inch, one inch uh, to the front side. Instead of being at the very edge of the tote, at the top, which which can be a little tricky when you sew a zippers right on the top edge mm -hmm. of something, you have a little bit of bulk. But with Nancy Zeman's method, you don't have any bulk once you pop your corners out at that top zipper. I think another nice thing feature of having it on the over the side a little bit is so when you packed all your groceries in there, it's in there. <laughs> it's there, it's in there. Uh, my sister Diana gave me a tote for a gift, a similar tote. I kind of redesigned it and made it a, a nicer roomy side size, a little bit deeper, but not so wide. Right. My sister Diana also <laughs> gave me the same tote, and I really like your redesign with the deeper pockets. And the pockets are great for your, your shopping list, your cell phone, or they're also great for a napkin. Take your cooler tote on a picnic and use no, uh, insert your no-hassle napkins and you'll find the tutorial for the no-hassle napkins at stitchitsisters.com. We hope you've enjoyed the Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this pattern along with a limited number of project bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitched Sisters and Friends on our social sites.